Frank has made six videos on Roblox's survival game, and I've spent the last three months studying and analyzing these videos to figure out if I have the skills necessary to beat him in a 1v1. The answer honestly might surprise you. I've split up the PvP skills into four categories. Swords, bows, IQ, and mechanics. And we're gonna use these to decide who would win. Starting off with the bows. Now Tank is well known for his amazing aim, and it's no different in the survival game. Even though he's only made six videos, he's still managed to make some incredible shots. Like this one, where he shot a player halfway across the map first try. And this wasn't an uncommon thing either. He did this type of thing multiple times. His aim tracking is also extremely impressive. Even when players are strafing, it's rare to see Tanker miss shots. This could also be due to him editing out the times he misses shots, but it's still very clear that his aim is top notch. Of course, this isn't surprising considering that he used to be a pro at Arsenal and is a top class Bed Wars player. A lot of his Bed Wars skills will cross over to TSG since the bows are similar to use. The only negative when it comes to Tanker and bows is the fact that he has a bad habit of using bows even when the enemy is close to him. This could result in Tanker being killed by a skilled player if they can get the first sword swing since when you switch from a bow to a sword, there's a small delay where you can't swing. There's a trick to get around this, which I'll discuss later during the mechanics part of this video, but I doubt Tanker will know this trick, so I'm gonna count this as a disadvantage for him. He could get away with his over-reliance on the bow before the update, but now that you get a speed debuff while holding the bow, it won't be so easy for him to rely on his bow as much. Now, my aim is definitely above the average player, but it's by no means amazing, or even my best attribute. I miss quite a lot of my shots during 1v1s, and most of my kills mainly come from sword fighting. For this reason, I think it's obvious that Tanker takes this round. So now it's 1-0 to Tanker. Next up is Swords. Now in my opinion, this is the most important category since Swords do so much damage, and in my opinion, most fights are won or lost by Sword fights. Now looking over his videos, Tanker definitely prefers to use bows whenever he can, but he isn't afraid to use his sword when he has to. He's gotten some respectable sword kills, but I think his best sword fighting feat was when he killed two blue steel players. For Swords, I don't think his Bed Wars skill will cross over a lot into to TSG, since he usually likes to go first person when sword fighting in Bed Wars, so he can get extra rage. However, going into first person on the survival game is not a good idea, since there's no knockback and you'll be at a severe disadvantage. Also, Tanker doesn't jump at all while sword fighting. He follows good basic principles by always circling to the right to get a good angle with his sword, but when he switches angles, he doesn't jump and gives a free hit to his opponent. If he jumped here, he could have dodged that attack and he would have gotten a hit for free while coming down. I won't be too harsh here on Tanker since I also have the same bad habit of not jumping while sword fighting as I find it easier to aim my hits that way. All in all, it's pretty difficult to say how good Tanker is at sword PvP just based off the few videos he's made so far. So for that reason, I'm gonna say that this round's a tie. But let me know in the comments who you think would win in a sword 1v1. Also, quickly, I need your help. At 100k subs, I get admin on TSG, so I need you to hit the subscribe button. Also, if any admins are watching this, please give me admin. I'm literally begging. Next up is IQ. I don't doubt that Tank is a pretty smart guy, but his survival game IQ isn't really representative of that. He doesn't always have amazing awareness of what's happening around him, which has led him to being ambushed and killed before. He also doesn't know that carrots give you plus two HP each time you eat one, and he leaves his health very low even when he has a good chance to heal, which makes him susceptible to being killed. Although somehow he managed to kill this guy, so respect to him. He doesn't always seem to use speed buffs while fighting, which puts him at a huge disadvantage in a 1v1 against me. Tanker's hotbar is also a mess. He regularly keeps random tools in his hotbar instead of food. And when he does use food, he doesn't use meat meals for health buffs. Now this was three months ago before the food update, but you could still get 25 plus health back then by eating a rib meal and a meat hunk. But to give him credit, he's been able to use his IQ to get some crazy 1v4s. He does a very good job at splitting up the enemies so he can fight them one at a time. He's an aggressive player, but he knows when to pull back and heal up which I'll give him IQ points for. But for the reasons I listed, I would say my game IQ is definitely better than his right now. But if he took the game more serious and learned all these tricks, he could potentially be on my level for this category. I'm gonna give myself this round. So now it's even at 1-1. Last up is mechanics. Now Tanker's clearly a very mechanically talented Bed Wars player. He does crazy plays regularly like it's nothing. But on the survival game, he's not as crazy. Oh my gosh, we got him, we got him. 
What? Quick tip. The reason he's struggling with this is because there's lag between when you place something and when it interacts with other players. So if you're trying to trap a moving target, try aiming your cell in front of them, where they're gonna be. This way they run into the wall, and before they get a chance to react, the door will close on them. This is how I trap this guy in this video here. Also, I'll reveal the trick to getting around the sword debuff time. It's kind of annoying, but when switching from your bow, if you unequip your bow first so you're holding nothing, then equip your sword, it doesn't give you the debuff. This is annoying to do in the heat of battle, but it could save your life. I doubt he knows how to do the boat glitch, and he probably doesn't know the map well enough to make tricky parkour jumps like this. By the way, fun fact, if you have speed boost, you can make it up this wall like this. But anyway, I'm gonna give this round to me, but I do think Tanker could improve his mechanics quickly if he tried a little bit. So I don't want to be too harsh on him. That makes it 2-1, and now it's time for the conclusion. If I was 1v1ing Tanker, my game plan would be to try build walls to negate his long-range abilities. I would slowly march forward like this and force him into a sword fight, where I have the highest chance of winning. In conclusion, I do think that I'd be able to beat Tanker in a fair 1v1, but it would definitely be close. And if he decided to take the game more seriously and learn the mechanics, then he'd probably have a good chance of beating me. Now go watch my last video, where I defended this huge arctic castle from 20 players raiding it. 